Hello everyone, welcoming you to Shore Officers classes. And uh, today we are looking at the IIT Jam Economics 2023 question number 31. This is from the multiple correct choice section, section B of the question paper. Okay. So the question says, suppose that any utility function from Rn plus to R plus represent a complete transitive and continuous preference relationship over all bundles. Then select the choices below in which the function also represents the same set of relations. Okay. So let us say we consider two bundles, a bundle X, which is consisting of X1 to Xn units of goods and a bundle Y, which consists of Y1 to Yn units of the N goods such that the utility from bundle X is greater than utility of bundle Y. Okay. So now we need to check that when we apply any of these functional forms, whether the ordering of the bundles remain the same. Note that since this is a multiple correct choice type of questions with four functional forms given, we will be considering each of them and checking them accordingly. Okay. So let's take the functional form A first. So F is basic. If I am talking about the functional form F, which is basically utility plus cube of the utility, right? So take a look at the first part. U of the bundle X is greater than U of the bundle Y. So that would imply since the utility function is from Rn plus to R plus, the cube of this utility function would be greater than the cube of the utility function for this bundle Y. So that means U of bundle X plus cube of this, if you add both them up, so that would become utility of y plus u of y whole cube. So that would mean function of x is greater than function of y. So if under the utility function f, sorry, but utility function u, if bundle x gives the high utility than compared to bundle y, then the same order is preserved under this utility function f. So option A is correct. It represents the same preference relation as U. So option A is correct. Let's have a look at the second function. So G is basically utility of X1, X2, Xn plus summation Xi. Correct? So we have basically considered two bundles such that utility of bundle X is greater than utility of bundle Y. But note that this does not imply that summation Xi will be greater than summation Yi. So that means U of X plus summation Xi need not necessarily be greater than u of y plus summation yi. So that means g does not represent g of x need not necessarily be greater than g of y. So g does not necessarily represent the same preference. Okay. So b is out. b will not be the correct answer. Now coming to option c. The H function is u to the power 1 by n. Okay, so this is essentially a kind of monotonic transformation. So if u of x is greater than u of y, if we take two bundles, then if you take 1 by n, nth power, then that will keep the order unchanged. So that implies H of x greater than h of y. So this represents the same preference profile. So option C is also correct. Now comes option D. M is basically u of x1, x2, xn 
plus square root of summation xi square. Now again by a similar logic that we applied for option B, if we consider two bundles x and y such that utility from bundle x is greater than utility of bundle y, then it does not necessarily mean that summation xi square will be greater than summation yi square. That's not necessary. Because we are not said anything about the monotonicity of the utility function u. So this is not necessary. So that means by using the same logic in option b, m will also not satisfy. So b and d are out, a and c are the correct options. So there are two options in this case, option a and option c that represent the same preference relation as u. Thank you. Now let us come to question number 32 of the IIT JAM Economics paper 2023. This is also a question from section B, so there can be more than one correct option, so we need to evaluate it accordingly. So consider a two agent, two good economy with an aggregate endowment of 30 units for good x and 10 units for good y. Agent i's utility function is max of xi, yi. We need to select the choices below in which the specified allocation of goods to the agents is parity optimal for the economy. So again, we have an identical utility function. Ui is equals to max of xi, yi, where i equals to 1 to 2. The total endowment of good x is 30 and the total endowment of good y is equals to 10. So now if we construct the Edgeworth box, it will be a horizontal rectangle kind of a thing. So this will be the origin for agent 1, origin for agent 2. So along this direction we have x1, along this direction we have y1, along this direction we have x2, along this direction we have y2. So the total endowment of x is 30 and the total endowment of y is 10. Okay. So now we will essentially try to understand how the contract curve will look like and we will see which of the four options is basically repre representing points on the contract curve. So if we now draw the indifference curves for agent 1, it will be inverted L shaped. And the exact same thing will be there for agent 2 as well. The indifference curves would look something like this. For agent 1 and for agent 2 it would look the other way around. So this is the point 10, this is the point 20. Okay. So given this structure, we want to find out how the contract curve looks like. So the idea is that if you fix the level of utility, let's say I am fixing the level of utility of agent 2 as represented by this indifference curve. Then what is the highest indifference curve that agent 1 can reach? Although if you look at this, the third indifference curve that I have drawn, the outer one, the shaded one, this is the full length of the indifference curve which can fit in the Edgeworth box. But even after that it can move higher, higher and higher. 
it is coinciding with this part and it can further move on so this is the part at which it will coincide similarly if you fix any other level let's say you are fixing this one the second one ic2 this was ic1 this is ic2 then also the highest possible level of indifference curve the individual ones ic's will be moving to the right and it will be the one that will be intersecting with the right boundary of the edge work box using the exact similar logic if you do the other way around if you fix a utility of agent 1 at a particular ic then the highest level of indifference curve that agent 2 can obtain would be given by the left boundary of the edge work box so it is essentially the left and the right boundaries of the edge work box which comprises my contract curve So the left boundary and the right boundary of the edge work box together comprise my contract curve. So now, if you check the options, it is option C and D which represent the points which is lying on the contract. Curve. so the correct options for this is option c and option d thank you